Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, first of all, on behalf of Travellers International and TWA, a very warm welcome to London. And just to put you in the picture, Travellers look after you on the ground and TWA, they look yeah. after you in the air. Well, I think you brought the rain with you, actually. It looks like it's about to pour, doesn't it? Now, we haven't had any rain for a few, uh, because, you know, hopefully it's nice as long as it's maybe clear the air a little bit and then be pleasant sightseeing weather. But never believe what the weathermen say because it's just quite pathetic. And they all <laughs> It's all right, Peter is quite good. He's quite good. He passed his test yesterday. Yes, he's, he's not bad. Um, my name is Joan, and I'm just going to be taking you to the various hotels where you would be joining your tour because I, I'm west of London. The majority of the way it is motorway. Now, at a bus on the bulletin board, but just to give you some idea, it is um, 8.30 from the Kensington Park 
the Park Court, the White House Hotel until midday tomorrow but uh, I would certainly do it today and bear in mind I don't know whether anybody's aware it is a bank holiday on Monday but it's a funny old bank holiday I mean for those of you still in London it's really nothing drastic I mean Harrods is open um, most most places are open we've had so many bank holidays this is just um, you know one, one of several so it's not like it's not like Easter or Christmas now about the tipping Restaurants do tend to be slightly lower really than the States, probably between 10 and 12 percent. But a lot of the restaurants nowadays do have the says, and on the reverse side, a map of the underground or tube. Now we call it the underground or tube, not the subway as you do. Now a subway to us is just an underground. And incidentally, another difference that does get everybody totally confused is when we say first floor, we mean your second floor. So if your room is allocated on the first floor, don't be wandering around the lobby, you'll never find it, okay? You have to go up in the lift. Now, when you look at the main map, you will see all the underground stations marked with a red circle with a line through it. So as we come up to the hotels, I will show you your nearest underground. For those of you going on to Paris, down the street, because we can't get out the other end. So we're going to reverse straight down, first of all, to the... Kensington Park Hotel. Now, just through those trees is Kensington Palace, in actual fact, and you can go through the palace. The, the servants lay out his clothes every day for the next 40 years, just in case he should return. It's a very sad love affair. And of course, you can imagine lots of reminders of Prince Albert, including this uh, monstrosity here. It's actually uh, designed in a style of architecture which is known as Victorian monastic Gothic. Right, basically architecture has gone overboard, but it's actually falling down, that's why all those boards are around it. When the Victorians built it, they built it on an iron frame, hung all the stone on it, but never sealed it properly. Of course, the water has gone in over the years, and iron frame has rusted, of course, it's expanding slightly, and so it's pushing the stone off, so we're actually going to lose it. And, of course, uh, the cordon off section there is where you go swimming, you see the little changing rooms and uh, all those chairs for sunbathing in. There is a club who come, actually, there's somebody in the water right up there, can you see them? There's a guy hosing down up there, there's also somebody in the water. Now there's a club who come here every day of the year to go swimming, even if they have to break the ice. They're known as the Over 60 Serpentine Swimming Club, and they're very easy to pick out, because they're all blue, they match those chairs. Right, right in the water, it's absolutely freezing. Now at the same time, we used to execute our common criminals on a very large scaffold. They got hanged 26 at one time. And just to make sure they've learned their lesson, just before life left them, we used to cut them in four. Mind you, prior to all this, they were allowed five minutes freedom of speech. Not that that made much difference, but the freedom of speech is something we continue on Sunday afternoons, when the area up here becomes known as Speaker's Diamonds. He also had a string of young ladies, and of course died very broke. But with a smile on his face. So as we make our way around, marble archway here on the right-hand side, and as we make our way past that, have a look on the left, and as we swing round, you'll see that Oxford Street then disappears to the left-hand side. Mile and a half of shops. And at the same time, if you look back to the right-hand side, you'll see over in the corner there of the park where the tall trees are, that speaker's corner, so that comes into its own uh, tomorrow afternoon. Well, as we continue, we're going to head off into the district known as Mayfair, which, together with Belgravia, is owned by one of the wealthiest men in the land. His name is Gerald Grosvenor, the Duke of Westminster, and he's reputed to earn in the region of £15,000 an hour, every hour of the day. Now, the reason for that is that his family decided just a few years ago never to sell any of the property but simply to lease it on very short lets, and of course everything all around us. And of course lots of the stores here in town have royal crests on them, telling us where various members of the royal family have gone shopping for at least three years with impeccable service before the store can apply to display that warrant. Now there are four members of the royal family who issue these, the Queen and the Queen Mother, the Duke of Edinburgh and Prince Charles. Now a lot of people ask me if Diana has one, and the answer is simply no. The authorities believe that if she had one, every store in town would have one. It simply wouldn't be worthwhile having. Poor old Charles. So here on the left-hand side we have Bond Street. Bond Street is comparable with Fifth Avenue or Rodeo Drive. It's where Sotheby's, the fine art auctioneers, will be found. Many other designer stores. And if you keep looking on the left-hand side, we'll stop here so you can see between the green town. And then as we uh, the window, you can see the crest of Her Majesty the Queen. See the gold and the red lion. And then over the main door with the unicorn, that is the crest of Her Majesty the Queen. So the Queen Mother's red and gold. The unicorn, the queen, 
And then you can see Swain Aitney Brig, that's where the Queen gets all her whips, I mean riding props. <laughs> well, you know, uh, and then of course, uh, Hatchards, the Royal Bookshop, they have all four crests. So they are on the right hand side, and another little arcade on the right hand side, <laughs> the Prince's Arcade, it's a coal ridge. So, a lot of those all around. But as we make our way further down, heading down uh, towards Simpsons, the famous department store, not to be uh, confused with the equally famous restaurant in the Strand. And next to Simpsons, or above the, the canopy, you'll see three of those crests. Charles, Phil and Liz. So have a look on the right hand side, you can see TWA, I'm sure you know what that stands for. Right? Try walking across. Right? Almost feels like it, doesn't it? And on the right hand side, those three crests. But we head off into the very heart of the west end of the downtown area, which you might call it famous neon signs. And you'll also notice that the whole area is being refurbished. They're giving us brand new interiors with all the latest technology. But they're uh, retaining the original Victorian facades and of course uh, hanging on to the original flavour of this very famous part of London. So as we uh, make our way uh, around Piccadilly Circus, you'll see all the streets coming in at the various angles. I'll point them at you. Fountains playing. So here on the left, Regent Street, famous shopping street, leads up to Oxford Street. Keep looking on the left-hand side as we make our way around. That's Shaftesbury Avenue. You see many of the theatres there. And as we go further around Leicester Square, this point here is actually straight ahead of us. But we are uh, going to turn, which to me is where we go to fuel ourselves. You'll see every conceivable fast food joint in the business has got a branch down here. Including a very famous Scottish chain that comes up on the right hand side in a moment or two. We'll also pass the Design Centre and of course Burberry's. Their number one store is just a little further down here, although have the first step. And then you'll see, as I say, the Theatre Royal Haymarket on the left hand side, but over on the right hand side, Phantom of the Opera. Show sure they're sold out until March next year. We've still got lots of people who line up every day and there they are. Hoping for return tickets, of course. But as we continue, making our way uh, alongside the Embassy of New Zealand, here on the right-hand side, New Zealand House. But as we uh, turn the corner, we're going to swing off into Trafalgar Square, which was laid out to commemorate the famous victory of the Battle of Trafalgar off the south coast of Spain in the year 1805. But we look on the right, there you'll see the column with Nelson. But once we're level with it, if you look way beyond it, you'll see a very familiar clock clock that I'm sure you'll know the name of. So on the right hand side now. So Big Ben. We'll get photos of that later on. Now the church here on the left hand side is St Martin's of the Fields, the parish church of Buckingham Palace where all the royal records are kept. And still on the left hand side, South Africa House. And across the square to the right you can then make out Canada House. But as we make our way further down we're going to uh, head off and towards the official entrance to Buckingham Palace, a triple archway that was placed here at the beginning of the century by Edward VII to commemorate his mother, Queen Victoria. Now, the central arch is shut. It is only ever used by Her Majesty the Queen. But should you wander through, or even drive through, as we're going to on one side, you'll then head on to the Royal Road, which is known as the Mall, and is coloured red to symbolise the red carpet leading to Buckingham Palace. Now, at the same time, if you look... Uh, just here on the right hand side, you will see a statue of a horse and rider. It's a statue of Charles I. He's uh, looking down Whitehall to the spot where he was executed back in 1649. Right, remember, he had his head chopped off. At the same time, that statue actually marks the very centre of town. In other words, it uh, is where all distances are measured to. So if you're 100 miles from that statue, or I should say 100 miles from London, you are then, of course, 100 miles from that statue. So as we uh, make our way around Central Arch, Closed off to the traffic, remember used just by them, including the bunker used by them during the Second World War is completely invisible from the air. The Royal Road, of course, the Mall, coloured red, and on the right hand side, Carlton House Terrace. Started life off as a palace, was built for George IV when he was a Prince Regent. They have been turned into offices and apartments, hard gallery cinema and the parks. They have a bandstand here, there's also a very large lake with waterfowl, including pelicans. Although they're not here at the moment, they've been taken off to London Zoo, hopefully to improve their table manners. They apparently were going around snapping up the pigeons. So, on the left-hand side, St James's. Look on the right once more, and any moment now you'll see a statue of King George VI, the Queen's father. And if you keep looking on the right-hand side, years ago for King Henry VIII, when of course all this was countryside, and it's now where all the ambassadors are accredited to the court of St James. So have a look up on the right now, and you'll see St James's Palace. 
and joined onto that through the trees, Toria Memorial, or the wedding cake as it's often called. And you'll see it's been uh, lovingly restored. But unfortunately, when the workmen were clambering around here, they knocked off the nose of Queen Victoria. So you'll see she has a brand new nose. Now, it always amuses me because it looks to me as though she's sitting here anticipating uh, some morning sun with a little bit of sink cream on her nose. And just imagine her saying, can't you? We are not mule whilst. There she is. Now the action. Victoria, Queen and Empress. Now on the right, across the flowers there, you can see the very elaborate gates, the Canadian Memorial Gate leading into Green Park. And at the same time, you can see Queen Vic's nose. <laughs> there she is. Oh, well, she looks miserable. <laughs> And as we make our way around here, we'll go slowly, but we're not allowed to stop for security reasons, of course. This is Buckingham Palace. Built on four sides, has an inner courtyard. There are over 600 rooms here. The famous balcony in the centre. And, of course, at the same time, it's here that the changing of the guard ceremony takes place. Now, it takes place every other day on odd dates. So not today, but tomorrow, of course, right? It takes place at 11.30 although you should be down here at least half an hour beforehand. As you can imagine, there are thousands of people who come here, so if you want to see anything, it's best to be at the front. Now, the changing of the guard is performed by one of five regiments of foot guards, the Grenadier, Coldstream, Scots, Irish and Welsh Guards, all professional soldiers, of course, so it is part of their ceremonial duties. And so when they're stationed here in London, they then live in the Wellington barracks that I'll show you. Now, if you take my advice, rather than stand up against the railings, where I think you'll see something a little bit fine, then you'll see the band leading out the guards, and it's always much more fun to see them on the move rather than standing uh, stiff over there on the uh, right-hand side. So as we continue... So as we continue, here on the right-hand side to London. So that's the number one Catholic church. There we are. So don't worry if you've got photos of buses, it just proves you've been to London, right? So there it is. Now, there are lots of shops down here. I wouldn't suggest coming down here, not unless you really want to. There's far more choice up on Oxford Street. Most of these shops are just for the thousands of office workers who work in this district. But as we make our way further down, we will we'll go and have a look at one building that was left behind by the developers, just to uh, give us some idea of what this street looked like 20 or 30 years ago. Now, even luckier, the building they left behind is a pub, one of 7,000 pubs that we have here in London. You see, we have our priorities, right? We have one in every street corner. Either that or a bank. We'll know that. So once an hour, on the hour, they have a short prayer, just to remind us of where we are. And of course, as soon as I hear that, that is, they do not allow photography. And I'll tell you why. People were getting carried away. They were trying to get better shots. And believe me... <laughs> when we go round the church, almost semi-circle all the time, don't come behind me. Hi, Jigger. make our way round Parliament Square. Lots of statues here of famous politicians. Peel, Palmerston, Disraeli, Canning, Lincoln, and of course Winston Churchill, who stands gazing across the street to the buildings where he spent the best part of his political career, St. Stephen's Tavern. And he of course was very fondly said, Madam, you are ugly, but I shall be sober in the morning. <laughs> so as we make our way round. You see all those statues. There's also, as I said, a statue of Lincoln. It comes up here on the left-hand side. It's actually a copy of the statue of Lincoln in Grant Park, Chicago. Always amuses me because in Lincoln Park, it's a statue of Grant. 
there you go. So we're going to head around. Statues here. This is A.P. O'Palmerson. Darby comes up here on the right hand side. Jan Christian Smuts, the South African, often referred to as the ice skater. You can see him over there on the right. And at the end, uh, on the right hand side, you'll see in a few moments, is the old bulldog himself, Winnie. So as we make our way around, you'll see him on the right hand side. Just make our way across the lights, heading back alongside the House of Parliament. <laughs> So here on the left hand side, House of Commons, Government and Opposition take their seats there. And then with a very large slate roof, Westminster Hall behind the statue of the Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell. The little church on the right hand side, St Margaret's Westminster, Parish Church of the House of Commons where Winston Churchill married Clementine Hosier and where Sir Walter Raleigh was laid to rest after he was executed in Old Palace Yard and chopped off his head as well as his hands. But as we make our way further down, heading alongside the Victoria Tower once more, lends his name to the gardens that follow on the Victoria Tower Gardens, which uh, in turn lead us down to Lambeth Bridge, Lish Church. So looking at the river now, I can see the tide has uh, almost reached its highest level. It's actually on the way out. So it was uh, up at its highest level, uh, right up by those rings, not so very long ago. It would have turned uh, about half an hour ago, that's all. But as we uh, stop on the other side, we'll find somewhere to stop over there where the buses are, right? And then, of course, if you look back over your shoulders now, back towards the shore we left behind, over your left shoulders, you'll see that very familiar facade of the House's apartment. You can see the river terrace there. See the marquees where the politicians take afternoon tea? That's where Churchill was sitting, taking tea one day when uh, Bessie Braddock walked past. Another woman who wasn't very fond of him, she said to him, Mr. Churchill, if I'll marry you, I'll put poison in that tea. He simply said, Madam, if I were your husband, I'd drink it. <laughs> uh, we'll see if we can find somewhere to stop. As we do so, just here on the uh, right hand side, the little church, Captain William Blythe, buried there. 200 years ago, the infamous mutiny took place. So there's a very large uh, exhibition down at Greenwich at the National Maritime Museum. So this is Lambeth Palace, London home of the Archbishop of Canterbury, head of the English Church. Uh, we'll pull in here. Just the embankment, there's a yellow uh, telescope over there. You get some nice shots, you know, of the House of the Parliament. There is uh, also uh, a little souvenir shop here. You know, by all means, please yourselves. But I would just give you one word of advice, and then steer clear of this ice cream truck. You go there now, Daddy. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go over here. Deep, deep, deep. 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 Deep, deep, Enjoy the war years, a million pounds. But there's the lion, very sad looking fella. 
That's written all over his face, isn't it? And of course, on the left, House's apartment, but ahead on the right, ahead on the right, a red and white striped building. That's the old Scotland Yard office, always featuring those famous Sherlock Holmes movies. The white building with the green roof is the Ministry of Defence, and a very ordinate building, almost French in style, is the Royal Horse Guards Hotel. And ahead on the right-hand side, you can make out, below the red and white striped building, the blue ticket kiosks of Westminster Pier, where you come to get boat rides up and down the River Thames, down to the Tower or Greenwich, or even upriver towards Kew, Richmond or Hampton Court Palace. Although if you're sailing upriver, it might be a good idea just to sail one way and come back on the train. Depending on how far you go, you have to pass through several locks, and so it can take quite some time. So, Westminster Pier. And if you are coming back here... have to wait our turn. So, as we make our way further down there, we'll also pass many other government buildings, the Department of Health, there's the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. We'll also have a look at the uh, Cenotaph, the War Memorial, where we remember all war. Oh, so, there we are. On the left, King Charles Street. So on the left-hand side, Foreign and Commonwealth Office, the Cenotaph here in the centre of the road, and then we'll head up towards Downing Street. You can see quite a crowd there. What's up on the left? And if you look down the street on the left-hand side, about halfway down on the right, you'll then see a black building. That is number 10, Prime Minister's residence. So we'll see if there's uh, policeman on the doorstep. Yes, there's a policeman down there. Did you know? Well, so on the left-hand side, we then have the Cabinet, the Privy Council Office, the Scottish and the Welsh Office, and they lead down to Horse Guards Parade, where we'll see the troopers changing the foot guards as well. Now, we're making our way off into Coxspur Street, heading off towards Pall Mall, which is gentlemen's country, the last stronghold for the male here in the uh, land. These are very large gentlemen's clubs that started life on make, as you can see, the three crests once more. Prince Charles, Duke of Edinburgh, Her Majesty the Queen. Boot makers. Well, as we make our way further up here, past many other clubs, Boodles and Brooks, St. James's Club, and at the top of the street, on the right hand by the Quadriga, you also see the brick wall, which is topped with spikes and barbed wire. It surrounds the 40 acres of the back garden of Buckingham Palace. It's where the famous garden parties take place. They have three a year, to which 2,000 people are invited to each. And I can just imagine the Queen probably spends the rest of the year doing the dishes. Of course, in there, very attractive gardens, helicopter pad, uh, tennis courts, and also a very large lake with uh, flamingos and pelicans. But as we make our way further out, there are many of those designer stores that will be found. Louis Vuitton and Gucci and Gucci and Gucci and all the others. So have a look here on the left-hand side. First of all, the hotel, that's a Sheridan. That's not very important, but have a look on the left. Harvey Nichols, rather a nice store. All the stores, incidentally, are open uh, until 5.36 o'clock this evening, depending on which store it is. And then down to the left, that is Sloan Street, heads down into Chelsea. And that's where we make our way further around. Coming up on the right-hand side, the Scotch House, Burberry's joined on, same company, of course. And then as we uh, make our way just a little bit further down, we'll pass Harrods. Enormous terracotta building, domes, flags, lots of royal crests. And it is enormous. It's as deep as it is wide. And lots of entrances all the way around. Very few exits. I think it's been designed that way on purpose. The idea is it's dead easy to get in. It's almost impossible to get out. <laughs> the idea is you get really fed up. The stonework. And you'll see the main entrance. The Twin Towers and the Central Arch. I always think it should have been a museum, let alone... Uh, I should, <laughs> it is a museum. I always think it should have been a cathedral, let alone a museum. Get off to the left here, but as we do so, you'll be able to see across to the right a very impressive uh, entrance. There it is. That's the Natural History Museum. And as we, uh, we'll be carrying a video camera, it doubles. <laughs> All right, so be careful. So what I'm saying is, when we have a photo stop round here, we're actually going to stop in the road. So just be careful as you step off. We don't want anybody to uh, get carried away. Really. Here on the right hand side, the Albert Hall, look to the left. Statue of Prince Albert facing the Royal College of Music, Campanile in the distance, and the Imperial College of Science and Technology. And then as we make our way further out, just going to wait for this truck to uh, see the spot of reversing. 
you will see uh, the next Royal College of Organists, very much like that Wedgwood path. So we'll find somewhere to stop here, and again, if you want to do that. <laughs> the National Westminster Bank Head Office, and that's the tallest building in Britain. It's not that high compared to many American skyscrapers, 650 feet high, but that's the grounds of the Tower of London. But in order to see the bridges, we're coming on to London Bridge now, the new London Bridge, but then on the left in America, you'll see this fine view of the ship gone through. The two bascules open up, and that's the cruiser. You can see there between the two bridges, a right cruiser from the Second World War, the HMS Goldfast. It can't be further because London Bridge Rock doesn't open up, so that is permanently bought there as a floating museum the HMS Goldfast. Now that lower span, it doesn't look as if it's going to open now, but if it could do if any ships are coming through, so let's hope it doesn't open over the next five minutes or so, because we're going to recross over that bridge. It's not that old, Tower our freedom. Now, you could ask the question, how come the dragons are here, because we're outside the city? The city did not include the, the river or the bridges, but now it does include because of the possibility of there being one way for the crown jewels and the lock the way will get much longer during the afternoon. But I think we may be the head of the crowds, I hope so. So we'll set it with an hour and a half from the time we arrive there and I may we'll see how it goes on the air time on. Now looking over to the left, there's London Bridge we just crossed, beyond the HMS Belfast. Over to the right, we're down to the right, that's downstream, no more bridges from here. That's the North Sea in that direction, 35 miles from here, the ocean, the North Sea. The Tower of London down below to the left. You can see what an enormous complex of buildings it was, that is. And it actually has a fourth purpose, it's a village where people live. Now, the Yeoman Warders, they wear red and navy uniforms. As we go around, you'll see a number of these ex-servicemen, as they all are. They all must have served the minimum. You can, if you like, walk to it afterwards. If you come out of the tower a bit earlier and you want to walk to the Roman Wall, you can see it more clearly. The Romans actually built their tower, though they all rather inside the tower, because the tower wasn't there at that time, because we're going back 2,000 years, the first century. If you look through the gate on the right, you'll see the execution site, little white stones laid out in the square over to the right now. And on the left, the church of all Hallows. This is a church with very important American associations. William Penn was baptized here the founder of Pennsylvania, and John Quincy Adams was married in this church, later became sixth president. John Quincy's father, John Adams, and the first ambassador here, second president, so the Adams family were well known in London. We park underneath there, underneath the church. Um, if the, the, the water exists there, it used to be a building on the green. Now the other side of that wall is where the Romans did begin. Building. Remember where we saw the wall earlier coming around the up exterior of the tower? Well, the, I mentioned then the Romans began building their wall here. The tower came much later. And opposite, there's a little, on the green, across from here, is a little ruined tower. If you walk round there on the other side afterwards, you'll see it's about uh, 12 foot high. The wardrobe tower, the ruins of a tower. The first two or three feet of it is the base of the old Roman wall. The very beginning of the wall where the Romans began building. From the river. The river then was twice its present no, really right good. up to this point where the tower was later to be built. So that's where the Romans began building their wall. The White Tower, it's open to the public, there's a collection of armory inside there now. Uh, a word of caution, if you can see some more from it, let's go up the execution. Ah! 
Alright, let's go. Where are we? We are going near by the museum, Beda. Okay. My mom is very happy to see the Kohinoor hero. Right. Mommy! Don't you wish you had it? Huh? <laughs> there is more trouble to hide. Chala. Apple and the Nikra. Garden and the Nikra. Being still, though. Huh? Yeah. Little movie like that. Unchuka Buddha. Unchuka Buddha. You can see Aku. Walk. Move the daddy. They didn't tell me I'm a.
Don't take a lot of people, Daddy. Above that you've got a flower above the gate, which is supposed to be the Tudor Rose. The Tudor Rose is supposed to be in two colours, signifying the amalgamation of the Red Rose of Lancaster with the White Rose of York. At the end of the War of the Roses, Henry the Seventh, the King of the Empire, won the battle against Richard the Third. You got done, please. You got done, Emma. Don't do that, boy. The most fat. Look here, look here. Look at that. Look at the raspberry tree. Did you like it today? Like you like it today? What? Yeah, flowers. Yeah, she wants to go. Flowers are the one. College and the buildings around that chapel are all there on the right, Eden College on the right hand side. They've got their own uh, tennis court on the left hand side, it's just up here on the left. Just past the traffic lights. And London with over 1400 bedrooms.
when they come over for Wimbledon on the right, the Gloucester Hotel. It's about five or six miles away from Wimbledon, but they get ferried across by a courtesy bus or, tra or uh, car. Depends how important they are. Get this area. Well, that's okay. The area is okay with you. Just take where you are and uh, stay and all this. Uh, it's all Arab area. All Arab area. And this comes into, brings into Marble Arch now. And Oxford Street on the right hand side, which is in that corner. Yeah. If you look at the banks and everything, restaurants, it's in all in Arabic. Middle East, Kabbalah and satellite juice. The sound and pictures. And all we go. So if you look there, and then take it. Lord Stephen. Lord Stadium. Yeah, Lord's Cricket Ground. Which is you can in get there. Right. Towers, steps. So the whole cricket ground. The buses are going. London bus. Yeah, this is all the Jewish area from here. Um, they all industry in banks, banks and all that kind of thing. In London, people come here on Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday, it's all in the park. Nantianju, Sammy, Kunama, see through the deer. deer.
can't even get in the mic. Yeah, I've been there. Bridge on the river Thames to the Kingston Palace. The church. Yeah. And then go along. Old kitchen of a king. Each and every one of those holes had a bell. Each bell meant who was calling. Different bells. Henry has all pictures of this castle. We go right from the ceiling to the floor.
There you will find everything except food. So if you if you buy something in uh, in a shop here, you know that if you do buy over two hundred fifty dollars, three hundred dollars in the same shop, that means to twelve hundred francs, then you'll get between thirteen to twenty three percent discount for the VAT for the tax refund huh, when you leave the country. But you have to buy at least for well, too much, and you just, uh, with this carnet, if you do want to buy something, you just show that, they will fill it up inside with your name, passport, and everything. And every time you purchase something, they will tear out and never per person, okay? Sometimes we have funny taxi driver, so it's always when you go out. Now the dollar, for one dollar, you'll get uh, six francs, 20, uh, 25 or 6 francs, uh, 35, that's what I said. Do you know the French francs, French money? Quickly, do you want me to show you quickly what we have? Ay, ay, ay. Look, uh, the artist uh, district, uh, the square du terre. So when you read brasserie, that means you can eat all the day long, huh? from one or big one, huh? but at least you know you can have already at the Concorde Lafayette. So this will be your bulletin board with most of the information. Huh? You have a typical writing, so I'm sure you can recognize my writing. You know your London and Paris and the date. So tomorrow morning you have your half-day city tour starting about 9 o'clock as you do our 
As you are three hotel, I would like you to check always the bulletin board because like me again at the hotel where I'd like to check your airline ticket, for example. Yeah, you can see the Arch of Triomphe, you will see it when we are at the end of the circle. Ooh la la, on the right uh -huh. side. So when I'm at the hotel, I'd like to check your airline ticket. If you have any problem, you can see me. And on the third part, uh, we have some option also if you feel like it this evening what we can uh, try is again Ooh, thank you don't worry so I said uh, going to Montmartre do you want me to give you the dinner I mean the menu what we can have at uh, for dinner yeah huh? We can uh, start with the French aperitif, the Kier, which is uh, creme de cassis or blackcurrant liqueur and uh, white wine. And you have one bus stop on the right side now. You'll see some more. And for the entrance of the metro, it's either a big yellow, you will find also the old fashioned in green and uh, red. Look. Uh, if you could tell me if you want to go out this evening or if you have because you have the most important group and 25 people over there and after to the carry and for five huh, from the Francais Choiselle and then we'll go to Montmartre first so this evening we can dress a bit no problem but we can be casual huh? Uh, remember that in Montmartre, like going also to Versailles, when you go to Versailles, we have cobblestone. So you better have flat shoes for the ladies. Huh? Always flat shoes and comfortable shoes when we walk around the city or like Montmartre. have a little gift to do to your wife, I can find jewelers, beautiful stone. Rue de la Paix, Peace Street. The crown of Napoleon III, of the last emperor we had. And here, to give you an idea, you have uh, 2,200 seats huh, for the people, and you can have 450 people on the stage. When you go to the opera, if you want to visit it on the daytime, it's very easy. And you just come here, around the front and on the side. It's uh, one of the last places where you have to dress up uh, when you have performance here. And some of the performance, they can go up for the seat to a thousand francs. And we, sometimes we have that. But it's too small, we have two other brothels. But now we 
also have synagogues. We have even Chinese uh, temple here. Well, still a lot of people do come here to by train, but uh, not enough. So all together with the outskirts and this for the fish uh, and seafood. In here, seafood here. We love oysters. And a lot of shells. Huh? And it is said on this uh, place, plus the fishy, we can eat them all the year round. We're very close to Bombard, the bottom of the hill. And you also have an, uh, an advertisement here for the Mula Mula for Mida. The big cities, of course, even though a big one, they're quite expensive. Huh? And those chapels, they could pray at the top, and underneath they have the crypt. But it's taking too much uh, space now, we can't afford it anymore either. So we have uh, much smaller things, uh, easier. Like Marguerite Gauthier, the, the dam of the camellia, huh? the artist section. You have uh, Sasha Dietrich, who was uh, one of the good actors. The Helen de France. On the right bank, we should say it's more commercial. On the left bank, you know, it's the old Paris. Big on the left, huh? the blue and red and white pipe that is Pompidou Center. Then you have the Twin Tower of Notre Dame. Then this dome with the column, the first one you see, it is the Pantheon. See at the end you have the Eiffel Tower. Look also now on the left side, and you have those. Oh, no, it's oh, I
Hey Angelo, è un po' come il
And the red light district is between here, Place Pigalle, and the Coulin Rouge, the Red Windmill, Place Blanche. So, in fact, when we drive along the right side of the street, it's where you have um, the busy part of this district. Yeah, on the picture, I think once you've gone outside, oh, and see everything here, huh? Tu ne vas pas trop, pas trop vite, Jean, s'il te plaît, qu'on puisse regarder les images. And even if you need a go in between, you have the love burger. But as long as you do walk in the big boulevard, you know there is no problem. If you go in the side street, well, then now you have to be careful. Uh, you can find uh, ladies, but you can also find transvestites, whatever. It's over here. And we've been uh, quite late tonight, so even if they do special rates for group, we don't have time to You see? Oh. Where? Where do you see the group? Oh, yes, yeah, the discount group, huh? Body show, cabaret, peep show. In fact, over the cheapest movie in town. Here for 10 francs, only two dollars, you know, you can see three, four, five movies. But if you go on the Champs-Élysées, I can tell you at least for five dollars you get one show. <laughs> <laughs> but we're still at the bay, you know, to let them in. Well, anyway, this evening I'm just showing you Paris. Then after you decide what you have to do. <laughs> I promise to your mother you'll be very good with me. So I try. I, uh, uh, I said I will never be a bus driver. But luckily, you know, Jean, our driver, is very good tonight. So we shouldn't have any problems. <laughs> well, once we had a very good uh, ah. in Paris. Ah, le Café de la Paix. If you want to have entertainment here, I don't speak about Pigal because it's for another purpose, but here at the Opera or at Saint-Germain-des-Prés or Odas, you can stay a full time. The Opera, Opera Avenue, where we're going now, it's the most commercial district of Paris. So if you're rich enough, go halfway through because I want also to show you nice places you know of Paris for shopping and things like this and you have one of the shops just here on the right side Tu ralentis un peu Jean-Louis Scherer on the right It is open from 10 o'clock so we'll make a short stop here, maybe 10 minutes, and then we start to go to the hotel. We almost finished the tour now. So 100 means 100, 100, 100 years. One. The Eiffel Tower. And it is one hundredth anniversary. Ta da! The rather conventional hall, this building here on the right, called the Palais des Congrès. And you see the boutique, boutique means uh, store, shop. And ahead of us, this large square, this large circus, this is Porte Mayo, that means Mayo Gate. The city of Paris was firmly surrounded by walls fortifications. There were walls all around the city and there were gates like cuts of arches to enter the town. As far as the city was growing, developing, the walls were rebuilt further out and the last walls were pulled down just after the First World War. Oui. 
That's uh, editor general of the first of the Second World War, called General Koenig. Star Circus. The triumphal arch that you see ahead of you was erected by order of Napoleon Bonaparte and is dedicated to the glory of his great army and it stands right in the center of Place de l'Etoile where uh, arrive 12 avenues. So this is one of the 12 avenues. Avenue de la Grande Armée, Avenue of the Grand Army, Avenue of Napoleon. The arch lies the tomb of an unknown soldier who was buried there just after the First World War in memory of all the soldiers who died at war. You will see some flowers decorating the tomb. And there is there a flame, the flame of remembrance that never stops burning. Every day at 6.30, there is a little ceremony. And on the left, you can see under the arch, the tomb of the unknown soldier. We'll be now driving down Champs-Élysées Avenue. So they come here and they wander around and then they choose to go to see a movie and then they go to have a drink somewhere. It's very busy, very lively in the evening. See on the right some of those former houses. Look at this one to the right. <coughs> this is how Chance it look like formerly. Only very nice houses like this. Now it's very, very expensive to live here so most apartments have been replaced by offices. This is the general trend in Paris. The population is decreasing. It's now only of little more than two million inhabitants. And for the city itself, not with, uh, not with but again to see who can offer to rent here. Only uh, fashion shops and uh, perfume shops. So look on the right, Jean-Louis Scherrer. Thierry Mugler. And round the corner here on the left, you will see Christian Dior. And round the other corner to the right, Nina Ricci. Caron perfumes on the left. Story here, babies, baby Dior. This is a studio for one of the TV channels, Channel Two, Antenne Deux. You have Guy Laroche on the left, and on the right also, and on the right one of the most luxurious hotels of Paris, the Plaza Athene. Very beautiful hotel. Other fashion shops, Givenchy, and there is Valentino, Ungaro. And this is a very nice uh, theater on the right. Theatre des Champs Elysees. Beer. The beer is made. 
but then it has become a common word for a restaurant where you have can have a quick lunch. Uh, some uh, places are just cafe and brasserie, and a cafe for, just for drinks and brasserie for a quick lunch. We're in the district number 16, the most residential area of Paris, very residential. But it does not help that it has the typical open air market. On the right, this is the Museum of Costumes. Here, there are also some nice cafes here. And from here, you get a nice view of the Tour Eiffel. And you can see two buildings which were uh, which uh, were built in 1937 for a world exhibit, which are nowadays used as museums, there are different museums. The Navy Museum, the Museum of Mankind to the right, the Museum of Cinema and the... Because very often here the police comes and we can't stay here. But you can see we can take some pictures now of that. So Paris is divided into two banks by the River Seine. The right bank to the north, this is where we are now, and the left bank to the south. In French we say Rive droite, right bank, Rive gauche, left bank. Blue, white and red, like the French flag. from the Eiffel Tower. We're organized there, like the Feast of the Federation, July the 14th, 1790, to celebrate the free wanted to suppress the Christian religion.
disabled. It is a. It was a hospital for many. Uh, founded by King Louis XIV, the Sun King, for the soldiers wounded at war. So the hospital was built, plus a church for the soldiers, and then they added a second larger church known as Odes, um, a similar thing at, at the same time. There is still a hospital for wounded soldiers. There is also the Army Museum, and there is also, obviously, Napoleon's tomb. Napoleon's tomb is in the dome, you know, in that um, big church that you see on the left, while the other church behind is still used for mass. Him and also the son of Napoleon, the son he had with his second wife, Marie-Louise. You know, he first married Josephine and they could not have children, so he uh, divorced and then he married Joseph, uh, Marie Louise, and they had one son, Napoleon II. too quickly to be gold leaf. It was uh, offered by Russia. It bears the name of one of the last uh, Russian Tsars, 81, uh, 1889, sorry, when... And also on the other side, you see this... Look at nice view on your right. You see the towers of Notre Dame, where we will go soon. Ahead of us, Place de la Concorde, laid out. The square was laid out at the time of Louis XIII, the military academy. Louis the kitchen was further on the left, but I mean, this is where during the French Revolution, hundreds of people were beheaded. Louis the Sixteenth, his wife Marie Antoinette, and at the end of the revolutions, the main leaders at the time of the uh, ahead of us, two beautiful buildings on the right, the Navy Ministry on the left, the uh, Creon Hotel, another very beautiful hotel of Paris, and the seat of the Automobile Club de France. On the left, Charles Elysee Avenue. Maybe you uh, could you watch or you, you saw pictures of the parade of July the 14th. There was a military parade in the morning. And at night there was another parade, a little funny parade. And the heads of state were watching it from the Navy Ministry here ahead of us. And at the end of the street, Madeleine Church. Saint Madeleine Church. Next to the Creole Hotel, left of it, behind the trees on your right, this is the US Embassy. Beautiful museum. It also has furniture, sculptures, everything. newspapers, photographs, everything. Really beautiful. And now this is the beginning of the Louvre of the Academy of Sciences, Academy of Fine Arts, Academy of History, Geography. And the charming little bridge which is reserved for concierge. His name was turned later into concierge, who lived uh, next to the royal palace. So his house was called the conciergerie. The conciergerie was used as a prison after the kings decided to move to the Louvre. 
you see the pont neuf, oldest bridge of Paris, and the conciergerie with its old 14th century tower. If you sit on the right, you will see a clock on that square tower. If you sit on the left of the bus, it's going to be harder. This clock is very old. It's been restored several times, but still works through the, you know, the, through the glass. This is really nice. Notre Dame was among the first Gothic churches built. Gothic style replaced Romanesque style with its surround arches. Romanesque style did not allow to build very high churches. They were also rather dark. While Gothic enabled to build very much, it was a different technique of construction that enabled to build much higher, wider, and clearer churches. Let's go. Of the 
I'll go back to school, I think, at, on next Monday, maybe this week. And then students have longer holidays until late September or early October. But Hugo, you know, was a very successful novelist, poet. Lots of, uh, you know, poets have a hard time when they're alive because people don't uh, accept their poems. Victor Hugo was written right Luxembourg Garden. Ahead of us, behind the garden, there is a department store called uh, Bon Marché. Bon Marché. If you're staying at the uh, Curie, this is a nice shopping area also. The street left of the Bon Marché, you know this area. So this is Boulevard Raspail, a little further, we'll be stopping for those uh, who said the carry or maybe other people. construction. This is for uh, an exhibit uh, feast that they've organized only for this summer uh, about the French Revolution. So they built uh, types of things like they built in those days. Okay. And this is the Rue de Rivoli. There is also a feast uh, on the level, I mean, there's the one about the revolution and the other one, which is a fair, you know, popular fair. And if you're not afraid of height, I would suggest that you got this wheel and you get a beautiful view. The big wheel. There are souvenir shops around here. Uh, store here to buy crystal. They sell a sell crystal salary and back around. If you want to go to the American Express, for instance. Wait. All right, so thank you again. This is Francis Basil.
this and this for new music. Yeah, you 
doesn't have any. He doesn't have a bow. He just has the arrows. 